Hey guys, I'm Ezra and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video I'm going to show you a guide about Grima. So Grima is a strong commander, being a T1 commander everybody has access to him and if you are wondering to which commander to invest into, Grima could be one of your choices. In regards to his typing, he is a support commander. This is giving you plus 25 focus which unfortunately he isn't specializing in. None of his skills scale with focus so I don't like that one. But plus 5 skill points is something we do appreciate. I consider support his third best typing. But I do believe that one of his better typings are leader. Because that is what Grimar is doing. He is providing survivability for his army. And also providing some madness procs within feeble for increased damage received. And then his army needs to do the rest. So leader is because of that very reason his number one typing he needs. If you ask me. His second best typing would be balanced commander. Now let me show you what balance does. Balance is giving you plus 25 for might, focus and speed. This is actually great. Might is going to boost not just only the damage of Grimar but also the damage of your army. Focus is just mitigating some incoming damage but he doesn't have any skills that scale with focus so we don't really benefit by this stat. And then plus two skills is always nice to have. Unfortunately Grima has received the support role and now we have to make the best of it. Having a look at Grima's stats it may look like he doesn't specialize in might at all. Unfortunately he doesn't have a lot of might. But this is actually what you want to boost. He wants to have lots of might, not just only to increase the damage of his army, but Grima himself has a respect 5 skill where he deals damage himself, and that skill is being boosted by might and focus. But still, the damage of your army is going to be boosted by only might. Then he has lots of focus. This is going to mitigate the damage your army receives. And you see I have right now minus 14% damage received. It's not big but at least it is something. And his speed stat is very high which is kind of nice because he has lots of madness procs and he needs to be faster to cast madness before the enemy takes action. And this is why we need speed. We need to outspeed all the hard hitters. Glass cannons are fortunately very slow so it is very likely that Grima is going to outspeed them and also the majority of fast units such as mounted units. Let's have a look at my gear. Right now I am running the Cutlass with melee might, Superior Hauberk with melee vigor and full helm with melee vigor as well and the one out smoking pipe for some self-sustain. Every two rounds I will receive healing. This is modified by focus so I am kind of trying to make the best with his high speed stat over here while providing lots of might and damage mitigation for my melee army with these two pieces over here. And defense is also increasing the physical damage mitigation. So I'm using these items for Grimar's melee build. Speaking of which, Grimar has two builds, one being his melee build and one his ranged build. And his ranged build, if you ask me, is the strongest build he has. So right now you see the ranged build of Grima. Let's go over the skills and see what they do. So at the top, respect 03, we see that he has Worm Tongue. This is his title. This is casting Commander Madness against the enemy while decreasing the focus stat by a certain point. I have maxed it out. Right now it is decreasing focus by my minus 50 for one round and also when you have maxed it out you simultaneously decrease the might stat by minus 50. This is a great skill. Every three rounds it is kicking in and big glass cannons such as Dine or Gimli they start to deal lots of damage on round 3 and onwards. So this is a nice way of countering those glass cannons. To the top we have Master of Mischief. Similar like Warm Tongue it is being activated every three rounds. But in this case, it is not commander madness. It is army madness against two enemy units. And you also decrease the defensive stat by a few points. And this lasts for one round. This too is very nice to have. What's even better is that this tree is accompanied by Enfeeble. Enfeeble is great because whenever a unit is inflicted with madness, you deal 40% more damage against that. And that is a huge damage boost. At this respect, 3-3, we see that he has Survivor as his title. 
and this is a nice damage mitigation ability because what this does is when maxed out starting on round four and onwards minus 30 percent damage received this is huge damage mitigation and i really like this because this pairs so well with what he does in general let me explain he has a skill called prudence this is providing survivability for the first two rounds because then you receive a 50% chance for all of your units to evade any incoming damage. On top of that, whenever something bypasses your evade, you mitigate that damage by 30%, be it elemental or physical. Now look at this. In the first two rounds, you provide survivability with prudence. And unfortunately, survivor, your title survivor, is starting to kick in on round four. So... Round four, you have to somehow bypass round three. How do you bypass round three? With providing Worm Tongue. This kicks in on round three and here Master of Mischief two. So you have covered round three with the Madness procs and kind of survive with the logic. A strong defense is a strong offense. And then at respect level five, we have his title called Wizard's Assistant. Now what this does is that your normal attacks have a 50% chance of dealing an additional 280% poison damage. In addition to that, when you max it out, you also get plus 15 focus. And by the way, I was told that this skill, like the poison damage of this skill, is scaling with focus. I'm not quite sure if that is true, but if you know, please let me know in the comments. In addition to that, not just only do we have lots of focus to get the best out of this poison damage, you may want to equip a gigantic hammer with a special effect frenzy to have this proc twice in a round. Like you could potentially let it proc twice per round, which will provide you even more damage. And then we have this skill over here, lower defenses. On hit against enemy army, you have a 50% chance to increase the damage you deal to them by 30%. This too is very strong. So long story short, Grimar has strong madness mechanics, strong survival mechanics, and is also dealing some damage by himself while boosting the damage of his army by a certain percentage. So Grima is definitely one of the best commanders in the game. I may need to revisit him on my tier list and place him a bit higher in the list. Now let me also show you the melee build for Grima, which you are seeing right now. I have already described what these skills are doing over here, so nothing new. The only thing new right now is the bottom respect 0 tree being second in command. Since you are running a melee composition, this is a kind of must because it's going to increase the damage of your melee units by 15%. And it's also giving you some focus. It will also boost the damage of your poison damage over here, like the wizard's assistant title. And then we have also discipline. This is going to give you plus 35 defense when maxed out. Now defense is great to have because you are fighting against good side. Good side is relying heavily on physical damage. This is mitigating physical damage. I think the threshold for plus defense was plus 60. So as long as your units don't exceed plus 60 defense, you won't suffer from diminishing returns. Let's quickly summarize what strengths and weaknesses Grima has. I think the number one strength he has is by far his madness skills like Worm Tongue and Master of Mischief. He is providing commander and army madness on a regular basis every three rounds he is the only commander in the game who is capable of doing that and a very nice counter against glass cannons because of that very reason his second strength would be that he provides strong damage mitigation he provides it with survivor and also with prudence and prudence also has evade built into it which automatically gives you his third strength being evade his last strength would be that he also provides some elemental damage with his wizard's assistant title so he is breaking through the high defensive stats of some units to deal damage directly to the hp of the enemy let's also summarize his weaknesses his first one being army madness and army stun why am i saying this well he will run a three unit army and that army composition is always weak against madness and of course stun because they can't deal damage when they're hitting themselves or when they are stun locked. His second weakness is mechanics that provide 
madness immunity. Imagine if you're fighting against a commander such as Theoden with the Horseman's Helm and Resolve. Resolve is a nice way of countering his army madness. So is Aegis. Or how about Watchmen of Kirith Ungol? That's Gorbak's Respect 5 title when maxed out special effect. That is giving all of his Orc units full immunity against madness. But there is also a special effect called Determination that is giving the enemy commander a certain percentage chance to resist commander madness and that is kind of good for glass cannons because then they are protected against your worm tongue his third weakness would be high alert and poison protection and i'm saying this because his respect 5 title wizard's assistant is being kind of hardcore counted by those two special effects you do poison damage and that's going to be mitigated by minus 50 or 60 percent his fourth weakness would be evade. You can't hit your enemy if they are evading, which is why you need either the Palantir of Orphan with Tactical Mark or the Wizard's Firework with Hunter's Mark. Those items have Pursuit and you kinda need it against Gilgalad. And his last weakness is Elemental Damage. None of your skills is providing you coverage against elemental damage, so when you are fighting, let's say, Oathbreakers, Keepers, Gun of the White, who is going with his focus damage build, or let's say Galadriel, you are kind of open against it, right? I mean, of course, you are mitigating damage in general with Survivor and Prudence, but still, this is just minus 30% damage mitigated, not minus 50% like High Alert. If you want to play Grima in his ranged build, these are the items I recommend. Like you have the Mirkwood Bow as his number one choice, lots of might, speed, plus attack for your infantry, ranged units, this is great, followed by ranged might. I think this is by far the best item if it comes to purple gear. If you don't have this gear, you also can go with the Uruk Crossbow, it has lots of might, plus attack, but unfortunately the special effect, if you ask me, isn't as great like ranged might. As a chess pieces, we have two options. The superior Horburg, if you don't need to take care of elemental damage, this is going to boost the defenses of your ranged units as well, and also lots of might. Shroud, to provide a bit more survivability, though I'm not quite sure if Shroud will be in conflict with the Prudence evade effect. If not, this speaks even more for Shroud. In case you need to cover elemental damage, like Oathbreakers, Keepers, Galadriel, Gun of the White, and so on, Go with the Quilted Armor. The Trapper's Hood is by far his number one choice if it comes to headpieces. It has like plus attack for your ranged units. This is what he needs. And also Hysteria to get the best out of your enfeeble damage increase. And last but not least, the Wizard's Fireworks is your best accessory. Again, plus attack for your units. Also ranged might. In case you need to cover Pursuit, like countering Evade, go with the Hunter's Mark. His Golden Gear, very straightforward. You want to have his Gigantic Hammer, lots of might, plus 6 attack for your infantry ranged units, followed by Rend. You are going to deal physical damage anyway, and with this you ignore the defensive stat by a certain percentage. Ranger Shroud, just to have even more plus attack, followed by some might, and this is also covering a bit of his elemental damage weakness with resistance. And then Hunter's Guide will also increase the damage of your ranged units by plus 3. This is also great. Might and Focus equally distributed while giving you Aegis. And Aegis is great. This is covering one of your biggest weaknesses, being Army Stun and Madness. In case you don't have Aegis and you want to play him more aggressively, feel free to go with Discord because Discord goes very well with his skill set. Now let me show you a little visualization why I believe it goes very well with his skill set. Here you see a little graphic which shows you how his madness mechanics work. So Grimar has Wormtongue being Commander Madness, Master of Mischief being Army Madness. Then if you equip the Bone Mask with the Hysteria, you will have Army Madness as well for these rounds. Discord will have Army Madness for the first two rounds. Silver Tongue is basically just Worm Tongue proccing on round one. So, Discord is great because of this very reason. You are already providing consistent Commander and Army Madness every three rounds. This is excellent. But with Discord, you also fill the void, like the Army Madness void, in the first two rounds. As you see, we have nothing covering this right now, but with this, you will go hardcore in the first three rounds. Like consistent madness procs in the first three rounds with Discord. And guess what? Whenever something is affected with army madness, you deal 40% increased damage 
against that unit because of your skill and feeble. And with this combination, you are kinda hardcore with your damage in the first three rounds. And this is why I consider the Hunter's Guide Helmet with Discord the more offensive version. Alright, let's continue. So we have covered the Hunter's Guide, let's go forward with the Wizard's Fireworks. This is something you just need for the range build because it has plus attack. Again, this is adding up, like look at this, plus 6 attack here plus three here, here, and here. That is a lot of plus attack for your infantry ranged units. And this has also ranged might and also hunter's mark in case you need to counter evade. Now let's also check out his melee gear. It is pretty straightforward. Cutlass because of plus attack, lots of might. It also has melee might. And then the superior hauberk with might, defense, melee vigor, damage mitigation for your melee units in case you need to cover elemental damage. Again, just equip the quilted armor with focus protection and considering as hat pieces we have two options over here the bone mask and also the full hem i'm not quite sure which one is better like the bone mask is giving you overall okayish stats while giving you plus three hp i do like that and it has also hysteria you know just to have some cc against the enemy army is always nice to have but in his melee build we don't invest heavily into enfeeble so this is maybe an argument which makes you think the full hem might be better it has even more might while providing flat damage mitigation with melee vigor. I just don't know which one is the best, but go with one of these. As our accessory, it's going to be the worn out smoking pipe. Since there isn't anything better right now, you have lots of focus, and with the stain, you also have some AoE healing for your three units in your army. If you want to improve your melee build to the next level, I think these items are a great choice. The gigantic hammer again, lots of might, plus attack. You always benefit by this item. This item is one of the best items in the game, so definitely go with that. And then in his melee build, you also want to equip the Warbone Battle Plate. Lots of might, plus defense for your melee units, also some speed for them, also providing some flat damage mitigation with fortitude of soldiers. This counts against elemental and physical damage. Having a look at his helmets, I just don't know which one is best. Maybe the Cask of Submerged Isle with Aegis is his number one choice because not just only has it great stats, but it has Aegis. And Aegis is covering one of his biggest weaknesses, being army stun and army madness. But if you aren't afraid of crowd controlling effects, maybe the Cask of Pride is the go-to. It has tons of might while providing you lots of defense and giving you flat damage mitigation with fortitude of soldiers. Like this will add up with the Warborn Battle Plates damage mitigation. Or how about the Warhelm with Discord? I just mentioned this little graphic with a Discord providing army madness for the first two rounds and maybe this is because of that very reason the more offensive version. I just don't know which of these helmets are truly best in slot. Maybe it's coming down to countering certain commanders with certain items. As is accessories, we do have two options over here. I do believe the penalty of Orfring is the better choice because of the plus three attack. Unfortunately, it doesn't have lots of might. Instead, it has lots of focus. This may boost the damage of his Respect 5 title where he deals poison damage. But the best thing about this item is it has tactical mark. This will help you a lot in order to counter evade like Gilgalad. If you don't have the Palantir, you can also go with the Fiddle of the Eldest and Blitz. You have a very slow melee troop composition, but with this they get initiative. And having a bit of plus defense for your army is always nice. Now that leads me to the question, is the Respect 10 item of Grima worth investing into? And if you ask me, it definitely isn't. Let me explain why. The stats aren't really great. The speed stat you get for your Urukai units isn't great either. First of all, you don't specialize into having a troop composition that consists of Urukai any Anyway, so that is the first thing that bugs me. The second point being even a bigger problem is Silver Tongue. This special effect isn't what he really needs. It's not great value. If you max it out, like max refine it, it is a 100% chance of, of activating level 6 Worm Tongue. Now let's jump back to the little visualization I prepared from before. So as you see, Silver Tongue is activating Worm Tongue being Commander Madness on round 1. Is this great value? I don't think so. Why am I saying this? The majority of glass cannons that go hardcore all in with their active skills, they do it on round 3 and onwards like Dine or Gimli. But Silver Tongue isn't countering them, you see? They don't do nothing here, like only normal attacks, but that's it. Normal attacks aren't a big threat against you. 
They can be a threat against commanders such as the Shadow. The Shadow is dealing lots of normal attack damage in the early rounds, but you only cover one round of those, so that too isn't great value. Legolas would be a, another example that is doing the same thing like the Shadow, but not as good. So let's not touch Silver Tongue. The Respect Tan item isn't worth it if you ask me after seeing this. The troop composition for Grimas range build is pretty straightforward. You will need great beasts for that to work though. Right now I have chariots but imagine them being great beasts. You want to have around 25% great beasts so they provide protection for your ranged units and then around 40% Morgul Arbalest followed by around 35% snipers and you can adjust the number of these units a bit like you could have a few less great beasts and instead increase the number of your snipers. And there you go, this his is ranged army composition, very easy. But if you do intend to play Grima in his melee build, you are more versatile with his army. I do have four formulas for you how you may get the best out of your Grima. So the first one being going with three evil man units. You will have halberdiers, dragoons and also one random evil man unit in your army. Like instead of chariots, it could be corsairs. And then you just do this, you have an equal amount of those units in your army but if you plan to go with t4 units let's say with fallen you can have an equal amount of those units as well here if you decide to go with let's say variax champions you may want to cut a bit short on those variax units like having around 60 champions and then go a bit heavier on your dragoons and albedeers like this have an equal amount of dragoons and halberdiers while having a bit of champions to provide damage mitigation of their special effect. Instead of champions, you can also have chariots like I have right now. This too will work great. His second formula consists of two evil man units and one orc unit being reapers and reapers only. So in this case, you want to have an equal amount of albedeers and reapers like you see here right now. And then you also want to have one random evil man unit if you go with chariots, you want to have like 60 chariots. If you go with Variax, again, you want to have 60 champions over here. But if you are going with Angmar's T4 units, you may just go with an equal amount of these three units. Like imagine my chariots being fallen right now. His third formula consists of two Orc units and one evil man. And again, you want to have Reapers and Halberdiers in your army. As you see, you have around 40% of each of these units followed by around 20% crushers. This too is a very good combination, but keep in mind, the more Orc units you have in your army, the more vulnerable you are against skills that specialize fighting Orc units, such as Champion of the Light. But there's also another composition in this formula you may want to use, being with Morgul Arbalest. You just replace your crushers, and then you have an equal amount of these three units in your army, Reapers, Albedeers, Arbalest. You can have an equal amount of those, but if you want to counter like a retaliate build, you may want to cut short on your melee frontline and invest a bit more heavy into your Morgul Arbalest, just as you see right now, like 25% Halberdiers and Reapers, followed by 50% Arbalest. Last but not least, we do have a fourth formula consisting of three Orc units only, like having 20% crushers in your army and the rest is distributed equally between reapers and mongol arbalest like this right now around 40% mongol arbalest and reapers and 20% crushers and there you go these are the army compositions which make sense but to be fair grimar is very versatile with his army composition he probably has more options over here but these are just a few examples i found they kind of work if you have more compositions to recommend by all means let me know in the comments but before i move forward to the battle reports let me give a big shout out to one of my fellowship members his name is popel that guy didn't just show me his strongest build like his ranged build i wasn't even aware of that before he also introduced me to his army composition, like all the compositions you see here right now is because of Popel. So thank you a lot Popel, I didn't know that Grima is this versatile with his army composition. 
Alright, it's time to check out a few battle reports. Here we have the player I gave a shout out to. He's in my fellowship. Thank you again, Popol. Let's check out what you have done here. So he is running the army composition he suggested to me. This is his gear. He has a gigantic hammer with break defenses, ranger shroud with resistance, rubber suit with hysteria, and the wizard's fireworks with hunter's mark. Amazing gear. And this is what he has done to Dwalin. Dwalin has this gear, the battle axe with play, the superior hauberk with fire protection, horseman's helm with resolve, and a flame with men. A great Dwalin overall, but this is just how strong Grimar is. Let's check out the snapshot page. Almost 320k damage versus 110k damage. And here we see that his Mogul Arbalest have done the biggest chunk of his damage. And here he is fighting against the Gandalf the Grey player. The gear stays the same, nothing has changed. Gandalf the Grey is equipping this gear, Midwood Bow with ranged might, Hunter Skin with ranged vigor, Rapper Sword with hysteria, and the fine smoking pipe with critical care. A good Gandalf overall. And in the snapshot page we see that Grima has done around 250k damage versus 70k damage. Morgul Arbalest have done a big chunk of damage again, but the snipers also contributed a bit with some damage. Here he is fighting a Gandalf the White in his not mounted units build. So let's check out his gear. Carver with Smite. Golden Skin with Contemplate. Cask of the Submerged Isle and Aegis. One not Smoking Pipe with Sustain. And as I see, he is running with the Focus Damage build for his Gandalf. So Gandalf wants to deal the damage by himself. And this is what has happened. Kind of crazy, right? Because in this fight, he didn't max out his beast because he already took a hit before. But this is how strong this build is. He still devastated Gandalf the White. In the snapshot page we see around 250k damage for Grimar, while Gandalf did around 50k damage. We see Morgul Arbalest, lots of damage, and again a bit of damage provided by the snipers as well. But let's also compare the melee build with the range build. So right now I have tagged with Popel, and this is me right now with this gear, Cutlass, Melee Might, and then Hauberg with melee vigor, Full Hand with melee vigor, and Smoking Pipe with sustain. The melee build I just suggested in this video. And you see this is the result. And by the way, thank you Thorny Devil for volunteering to do this testing. Like, I wanted to test out a few different army compositions. Right now I am running three evil man units in my army. So big shout out to Thorny because I was kind of having trouble finding people. He is running this item, Balance X, great weapon for Gimli, superior hauberk with fire protection, Cask of Pride with melee suppression. This is like a good way of fighting against Grima's melee build. Followed by Box of Knowledge with the warrior typing. This has lots of potential and this Gimli is going to deal even more damage in the future if he max refine his box. So lots of potential open here. This is the snapshot page. We have done around 250k damage versus around 190k damage. Albedirs and Dragoons have almost done an equal amount of damage, while Grimar and his chariots have also done an e equal amount of damage. In this fight I am fighting again against Thorny, but this time not with the same troop comp. I have switched to two evil men and Reapers army comp. So let's check out what's happening here right now. We have done 255k damage versus 165k damage and we see that almost all of our units have done around the same damage. One more report with a slightly different army composition. This time I have decided to also include a bit of crushers because they are going to decrease the defensive stat of the enemy army and I just wanted to see how this will do. And here you see that is kind of a big difference. Maybe we just were a bit more lucky with our madness procs, but let's see what has happened here. We have done almost 300k damage versus 130k damage. And we see our Reapers have done lots of damage even more than in comparison to the report from before. So as you see, Grimar is a great commander, very versatile with his army composition. He has a few builds which you may go back and forth in regards to what you're fighting against. 
and this is letting me think that Rima is actually better than I thought. So I definitely need to fix him in my tier list. He deserves a spot more at the top. And that being said, guys, this is Grima in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed this guide. And if you enjoyed this video, just as always, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. You know by now, this helps me push against the YouTube algorithm. And that's it for this video. I see you guys next time.